Okay, in this tutorial, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to build a, a flatbed um, roller assembly uh, with four wheels uh, that will be the start of a potential repeatable vehicle. And uh, the kinds of things I'm going to include are I'm going to include um, some bearings which I'm going to get from the McMaster car component catalogue here. Um, so let's start by uh, making a new component and the new component uh, I guess I can rename it now and I'll call it the body of the um, of the vehicle and for the body what I want to do is make a center rectangle uh, sorry I've centered that in the wrong place so I'll just hit escape and start again a center rectangle uh, centered on the origin and um, I guess about um, well let's make it 150 uh, by 200 for now. We can always come back and change that. Maybe 150 is slightly too big. Let's go with uh, 130. Um, that looks about right. I'm happy enough with that. I'll finish the sketch and then I'm going to extrude the whole thing downwards um, and uh, 20 millimeters seems maybe too much. So let's make it minus 15. Uh, that looks like something I'm happy with and I'll say OK. Um, and uh, next what I'm going to do is just create some room for some axles and we'll come back and think about that uh, later and what the point of the axles is. So I'm going to sketch on here. Uh, I could do this in two steps or in one. Um, I think for now I will do it in one step. Um, I'm going to make this axle uh, halfway up. So seven and a half millimeters up from the bottom, and I'm going to make it uh, 15 millimeters in from the end. So that's located, and I can do the same at this end. Uh, it's a seven millimeter diameter hole, and again I'm using D to bring up the dimension option, and I'm going to make it 7.5 from the bottom, and. 15 from the end and say so, okay finish that sketch um, just a reminder that I'm using shift and holding down my middle mouse button to do these kinds of movements uh, and I can extrude both of those holes as a cut through all and say okay and then the last thing that I'm going to do with that is just to give it a material. Um, I right click on the component, choose physical material. And I think I'm going to make this out of some kind of uh, uh, PE Uh, high, death, high density polyethylene, let's say that's what we're making it out of. Um, although actually, given that that doesn't come with an associated um, visual, let's make it out of nylon. It, it's not going to matter too much. We can come back and look at this depending on what materials we have. Okay, uh, that's a good start. I'm just going to save this as um, vehicle bed with uh, wheels on bearings, which is what we're going to build in the end. Next, I'm going to produce a new component, so I'll go back up to the top level of my model tree because I want my component to be next to the body, not a part of the body, and then I'll say create a new component. Uh, and this new component is going to be an axle. And for the axle I'm going to sketch, I'm going to take advantage of some of the symmetry that I had before and I'll sketch on uh, this plane here. Choosing what plane to sketch on is always um, 
an important sort of skill to to keep thinking about um, you want to try and take advantage of symmetry as much as you can and then sometimes you'll also find that you um, want to create new planes to sketch on as well. Anyway I'm going to use P for project or in fact I can use uh, in the create menu I can choose the project option and I'm going to project that hole that we just created and that's my sketch complete uh, that's all I need now I'm going to extrude that sketch it uh, that sketch, that circle, symmetrically um, and I want to have it come outside the width of the um, of the bed. I'm going to have it come uh, let's say 75 millimeters at the moment and I'll say OK. And then the last thing that I want to do here um, is or maybe not the last thing that I want to do but a thing that I want to do here is to add a material I'm going to make this uh, shaft out of aluminium this axle out of aluminium uh, which is a metal I can drag and drop onto there and that looks good um, and actually the next thing that I'm going to do is just to uh, take away some material off the end so I'm going to um, project the original circle and say OK I use P for project again and then I'm going to make a 5 millimeter diameter circle uh, and say finish sketch and what I want to extrude is uh, this material here I'm going to take that back uh, I'm going to say 8 millimeters and say OK and um, then what I'm also going to do is create a mirror I'm going to mirror a feature and that feature is going to be this thing that I just made the kind of step in the axle and the mirror plane is the central plane so that the step ends up appearing on both ends of the axle and I'll say OK I'll just turn it around to make sure it looks OK and it does. The reason I've created that step is because I'm going to cite my um, bearing on this 5 millimeter uh, diameter bit of the axle and then it can just rest against this lip and that'll keep it uh, tightly in position and, and located somewhere where I know where it is. Uh, good, I'm now going to um, take a copy of the axle and then paste it and with this new one uh, we want to move it all the way up to there uh, 170 millimeters appears to be the right spacing uh, I could also choose to align it um, with the the hole in the plate if I wanted to uh, and that's something we've talked about in previous weeks okay uh, now I've got everything set up ready to add some bearings and then finally some wheels. Uh, so for the bearings it's quite complicated to design your own bearings and what you can do instead is to say insert and then insert a McMaster car component and this is a catalog of all kinds of ready-made um, parts that you might want to include somewhere in your models you can see there are a huge number of different things uh, that you can add in. So what I'm going to do, uh, the way that I work with this catalog is to start by searching for what I want and what I want is some bearings uh, and in fact I want just the simple ones that look a bit like this. Uh, so I'll click on ball bearings and again I'll just click on ball bearings so we get the, the standard options. I'm going to want metric ball bearings and my shaft diameter is 5 millimeters. that's the axle that I've just made. Um, it looks like I don't have many options here so I'm going to say OK I'll take a 19 millimeter uh, housing ID. You might want to change your shaft diameter to give you uh, different options but for now that'll do fine for me. Um, it's going to be 6 millimeters wide which will fit nicely where we are. Uh, and 
I'm not going to worry too much about the, the closer details. So I will say this very first ball bearing here is fine for me, the open one. And what I can do is then click on the part number here, 5972K197, and that brings up, um, well, first of all, an opportunity to order some. But from our point of view, what we're interested in is this CAD option here and product detail. And if I click on that, I can scroll down to the bottom, choose to save this as a 3D step and hit save. And what I hope I'll find now is that one of those bearings has been dropped into my model um, like so. And you can see that it's got a, a part number over here. Uh, I'm going to I, I just moved it so that it was in the clear on its own. We'll align it separately and I'm going to say OK. Um, so you can see now uh, this bearing looks like it's about the right size to fit onto this axle here, which is good. Uh, so I'm going to just rename this quickly so that I remember that that part number refers to a bearing. That can be useful if you've got lots and lots of McMaster car components. They'll all have names that are slightly meaningless. And so uh, you might want just to, to do some renaming. Now we're going to do some of the uh, assembly uh, options that we've done before. I'm going to use a joint. I'll capture position because I want the bearing to be sitting there. And I'm going to say that the, the um, what do they call them? The joint origin. So all of these little uh, sort of half circles with a blue dot in the middle are joint origins. They're places where I can choose to make things line up. And I'm going to choose that joint origin to line up with the joint origin at the center of this face. So it's that one there. One thing I think I can do is pick the face I want and then hold down control and then it'll lock to that face and I'll know that I'm selecting the the right bit that I wanted. Uh, that's not quite worked, it's on the wrong side of that face, so now I'm going to flip it. And now you can see that I've got what I want. Um, the bearing sits tightly on that um, axle, it's up against the lip that I deliberately put into the axle, uh, and um, it's there's just a small amount of the axle uh, sitting out available here. And I'm going to say uh, just check that that's been put in as a rigid group, which is what I want for now, and I'll say OK. Uh, I'm going to make four copies of this now. Uh, and I think I can probably locate it straight away, but because I probably also want to use a joint, I'm actually going to move it slightly away from where it needs to be in the end. Um, I'll put all of these near where they're going, but not quite there yet. I've used the wrong slider there. Uh, that one can go somewhere there. And we'll paste one more, which can go somewhere down here. I'll say OK. And then I'm going to use joints again to get this right. I'll go quicker on the joints. Now I've done one. Uh, you see the kind of process, I hope. Uh, just check that looks right. It does. And the last one and that one has gone in the right way around this time so we can say OK. Um, so I've got those four bearings um, in position now and the last thing I'm going to want to do is add some wheels to those bearings. 
uh, and then I'll feel like I've uh, designed this reasonably well. Actually, there's one more thing I want to do. The idea here uh, that we've done very deliberately is to have the inside of the bearing be sized appropriately to the axle so that the bearing fits quite tightly on the axle. So I'm going to put in some chamfers on all of these axles, uh, maybe two millimeters, that's too much, uh, one millimeter uh, chamfer on each of the axles just to help me, uh, the way this is going to work in the end is that um, we'll probably have to tap these bearings on with some kind of a, a soft mallet or a hammer just to get them uh, to be a really tight fit in the position we want uh, on the axle and so uh, adding a, a chamfer there will just help to locate the bearing and get it to sit in the right place um, before we push it into place and then what really happens in a bearing is that this inside section of the bearing is fixed to the axle and those two move together and the outside section of the bearing is free to rotate that's not quite how we'll model it in fusion uh, we will actually um, end up modeling that the wheel rotates relative to the bearing um, but I think it's it's a good enough model that it'll all make reasonable sense and, and look approximately right. Um, I'm going to now make my final set of new components which are the wheels. Uh, I'm going to make my wheels relatively simple things, uh, just discs um, but you might find you want to make your, your wheels more complicated or um, that there might be something else you could do with wheels which is um, a useful way to do it. I'm going, I've am going. i used the P key again to project the outside of the bearing because that's what my wheel needs to be built around and then I'll build another circle uh, and I'm going to make this one a 45 millimeter diameter like so and I'm going to say finish that sketch and then I'm going to uh, extrude that um, disc or annulus back and I want to go uh, six millimeters that's the the thickness of the bearing so I'll make the wheel the same thickness and I will add on uh, some fillets on the edge of the wheel as well. I'll make both of those one millimeter fillets like so. And I'm going to say that that whole wheel is also made out of nylon. Um, so I can add a physical material. Like so. Uh, and now the last thing that I'm going to do is copy those wheels and make four copies just as we did with the axles uh, sorry with the bearings uh, the first one goes somewhere up there the second one goes over there and if I can locate these correctly, which I'm hoping I can, then I'll be able to use as-built joints on them. So again, 140 in that direction. I think it was 170 in that direction. Puts that wheel in about the right place. And we can say OK. Um, and then the last thing I need to do is some joints for all these wheels and as I say I can use as-built joints uh, I want these to be uh, revolute because I want the wheels to rotate and they're between the wheel and the bearing centered on that central axis and if we could see what the wheel was doing we would see it was rotating there in fact uh, one thing that I can do afterwards is just to put a marker on the wheels so we can see that rotation. I'll put in these four as-built joints again between the wheel and the bearing centered on the central axis and 
and the last one is there um, and I'm just going to uh, select this first wheel and put a marker on it so that we can see that the wheels are rotating uh, I'll use a rectangle something like that will do fine and just uh, put that some fraction minus 0.2 millimeters into the wheel and I'm going to use A for appearance uh, that gives me the appearance menu and I can just paint that some color this is all just uh, for visualization this last bit um, if I put some if I click on that back face it's easier to paint only that back face and I can uh, make it a, a blue paint uh, and now I hope I'll be able to see ah interesting so the the thing that I hadn't done was to make a joint between the axle and the body so I'm going to do that as well now an as-built joint uh, this one can be rigid I only need one uh, revolution and that is at the moment between the wheel and the bearing so I can fix that axle in place and I can do the same with the front axle an as-built joint between the body and the front axle and say OK and now I hope uh, if I ground the body and capture all the positions I hope I'll see that the wheels can turn as I hoped, as I planned for them to do. Uh, and I can turn off the visibility of the joints now so that I can just see uh, my vehicle on its own. Okay, that is what I wanted to make in this tutorial. Um, the reason that I wanted to make it like this is um, all of the parts that I've used here either I can see exactly how I'm going to make them or I know that they're a type of bearing that I can buy. Um, if you're using this for the iMac e design challenge you'll realize of course that the bearings um, might have an associated cost and you might want to find some nice cheap bearings to use in your um, vehicle so that you can stay under whatever the cost limit is for this challenge. This way of designing a vehicle means that everything is very tightly controlled. If I just had a loose axle with some wheels on it, which is kind of how a lot of toy vehicles are designed, what we'd find is it wouldn't roll in a straight line because there's some rattle there. There's room for everything to uh, move off to one side or another. Whereas here, the axle is tightly housed inside the body the bearing is tightly fitted onto the axle and the wheel is tightly fitted onto the bearing. So the only movement that's left is inside the bearing and that's designed to be um, carefully controlled to be pure rotation. So the hope with this vehicle is that if you were to actually build it, it would move in a very straight line rather than going off at an angle uh, because you built everything quite carefully. The body um, could be built from sheet nylon uh, or from a block of nylon um, or, or in fact you could build that from a block of wood or various materials that we've got in stocks. The axles can obviously be turned down on a lathe from aluminium bar that we have in stock and the wheels could be uh, made from the same material as the body or there are different ways to make wheels. You can actually um, cast silicon wheels if you make a mold. You could 3D print a mold for some wheels uh, and make them that way. Uh, or you could uh, turn them on a lathe uh, as a set of four and then cut four separate wheels. So uh, lots of different ways to make those wheels exactly as you want them to. But again, you can see how to make them really quite precisely so that what you're doing has the repeatability that's part of the challenge here. Okay, I'm going to stop that video now um, and that's how you use um, McMaster car components 
I guess the main thing that we've learned is that you can go to insert a ma master car component uh, just to remind you what we did. We searched for bearings, uh, decided to use fairly standard ball bearings, um, metric measurements, five millimeter shaft diameter and then we went and found one of those individual bearings this one here the 635 clicked on its part number where the, the part number is blue and finally the product detail gives you the option at the bottom of the page to down uh, to save a step file and that will mean it's available in your model so that's how you use the McMaster car components. Okay, uh, that's that video complete.